Everybody, good morning and welcome back to Reaper Pro Tips, the hump day edition. With me, your host, Anne, disembodied hands, Quindy, a floating around in the ether, John, and a, you know, on the cusp of no longer being named in this podcast or, or, or not podcast, video cast, Justin. <laughs> and, uh, oh, and, um, Miss Post Birthday Girl, Miss Clicky Paws. Are you coming, Clicky Paws? You coming? Come and say hi to the fam? Yeah, there's my girl. There's my girl. Morning, Sentimental. Morning. This is, yes, the Kiki has come. The Kiki, the one one day past one year old Kiki. One. Oh, there's the ears. Look at that. She must have seen a squirrel. That's her real expression, guys. That's her real, the, the ears actually showing up. We're, normally the ears have fallen off when we're here on stream. Yes, the ears are falling off. Oh, oh. Nope, now they're wobbly. Oh, there we go. There's our alert look. You almost look like a noble shepherd. Almost. If only they knew you were just a little dingo. Yeah, I think they know that. I saw you when you were a baby. Yes. Alrighty, cool. Boom. Hey, my GW order is out for delivery today. My Leviathan box should hit us, Kiki. It should hit us. It should hit us. Yes, Kiki the alert huntress. Predator of mice, rats, and squirrels. Oh, you just got a shepherd. Goliath's a good name. Their their work, I'll tell you that. You probably already figured that out, Raven. Kiki was a was quite the handful as a baby. Structure, structure is the most structure and um, uh, like like habits. Getting the dog into a routine is your best friend. Because then they just do it without thinking, and you don't have to fight them to get them to do stuff every day. Oh hi, are you just gonna lie next to me? Are you going to be, get belly rubs during stream? Is that your new plan, Keeks? Apparently it's her new plan. She's like, I am past one year old. Now I'm going to lie down in here next to mama and constantly distract her and get pettins. And the teeth. Oh, nice. Yeah, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Yeah, the thing with shepherds that I found with PTSD um, SDs can be just that... Uh, like, like they, they, it's a weird balance, right? Because I had a friend who was PTSD and he had um, one of one of these with Shiloh Shepherd, And it can be a hard, a hard balancing act because like you still need to be in charge. And yet the dog needs to know when to buffer for you without the dog feeling like it's in charge. And it's a really, it's a really interesting dynamic. And so like, totally like go for it. Like fingers crossed for you. I hope it works out. Because they're the best dogs. I mean, okay, I'm biased being a shepherd owner, longtime shepherd owner at this point. But, uh, but totally, totally fingers crossed for you. Lots of socialization for sure. Lots of work, pup, right? Yeah, the teeth will, I mean, well, <laughs> she didn't, I thought she was going to stop with the teeth at six months and she went on until like, I don't know, nine. <laughs> ah, it's your first. Okay. Yeah, shepherds, like socialization is not optional for shepherds in my opinion. You, because they've got to get to know what's normal in the world versus what's not normal, right? Because they're very vigilant dogs, and that, that makes them good for what you need. So, yeah. I just, I love them. I love shepherds. I could talk shepherds all day. And ask, ask chat. Like, seriously. <laughs> we are painting um, Australia. So, this is actually an older model that was redone recently in Bones, USA. She's a wood elf. Um, she's a very, she's more, I want to say, old style. We were, we were talking about this yesterday. Here, I'll show you what I mean. So, she's a very stylized figure as far as the shape of the face and everything like that. A little part of it's probably the elf thing. But when you compare her to some of the other models we're painting right now, like Kathy, it's just like a very stylized face with very large eyes as opposed to a more realistic face. So I like to, I, I'm essentially what I'm seeing. These are both Bobby Jackson, um, but it was a Bobby Jackson like old. And originally this was in green putty. So it was not a 3D sculpt. Whereas the, um, the other one definitely is. Yeah, I'm glad you're getting your walks in, Twisted Doma. That's awesome. I had my first real CrossFit class last night, guys. Like, you know, the intro one was only like 15 minutes. This one was an hour. <laughs> but I'm happy to say that my muscles got so wrecked by just the intro class that apparently I'm like, I'm not going to be that sore anymore. 
Because I felt like last night I was like, I was scared. I was scared about what I, how I would wake up this morning after last night. But I have minimal soreness. Like, it was just, like, so, certain deep muscles that, like, got more of a workout last night. So, it was fun, Slayer. It was fun. I'm going to say it. Now, keep in mind that when I was uh, in high school, I was lucky enough back in the 80s, right? Uh, the dark ages, but I was lucky enough to have a gym coach who really believed that women belonged in the weight room and should do weights just as much as guys, which is a rarity, especially in rural Wisconsin was a rarity back in those days. So I like weight training. I like lifting. Um, I just haven't done it for decades, literally decades. Uh, and I got to last night and I'm like, yeah, I can get into this. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, there was, there was a lot of cardio too. Um, like guys, okay. So I use a heart rate monitor because although some people don't believe in them, I do. Um, cause I want to know when I'm getting up to my maximum heart rate and I want to kind of ease off. I don't want to punch it too high. Um, yeah, Gen X power. Yep. Yeah. Um, right in the middle of it too. Uh, but yeah, but I was getting into like 150 beats per minute at the top end of this. And the, the most, the most strenuous exercise that I did wasn't even the running. Like the most strenuous exercise I did was, <laughs> was a floor exercise. So you do a plank, which I actually do planks every morning. I do it with my yoga routine. So I do like a one minute plank every morning, but this was a plank where then you're rolling a medicine ball back and forth underneath you for like 10 to 12 reps. And it is hard. It got my, it pegged me at like 151 or something. I was like, Jesus. <laughs> It was like serious, serious stuff. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, you miss Kiki. She's hanging out somewhere. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so that was the roughest exercise that I did. Uh, I had to, that was my sub for push for sit-ups because with my back, I'm still not okay to do sit-ups. Um, but all the other stuff, the, the, the dumbbell stuff, um, and the squats, I managed much better this time. So I feel like I'm already getting stronger, which is a super motivational thing. And the, and the cool thing, <laughs> and upside down stale. I know, right, Kiriko? Even worse, because I have short arms, Kuro, they had to get me a small medicine ball because <laughs> I got one of the big ones. And I'm like, I will be lying down on this. <laughs> they had to get me a little one to roll back and forth. Ah. Um. You got to work up to it, Pendrake. I mean, if I had just jumped into CrossFit without first, like during the pandemic, I started up yoga, right? Which was huge. Like it really has helped. You know that it's helped my back. It's also helped everything else. Um, So I've been doing yoga now for about two and a half, three years. And then you know that I, I walk every day, twice a day. And then I had just started putting the running in, right? For a few weeks before CrossFit. If I had not put that running, started to put, you know, work my way up just in little runs, I would be a lot worse off because the running actually strengthened a lot of my leg muscles. Uh, and, and when you strengthen your leg muscles, you're also strengthening the muscles that support your knee. So, but you've got to do it smart, right? You've got to not overdo it. So, yeah, if you, if anybody, if anybody from a dead stop went to CrossFit class, I think you would blow out everything in your body. <laughs> hey, Miniature Stan, we're talking working out. I had my first CrossFit class. It's, um, which is a combo of aerobics and weight training. I had my first CrossFit last night. I'm excited. It was kind of fun. It was, it was brutal. It was brutal, but it was kind of fun. Yes, yes. Welcome. Welcome, pack of people. And I'm going to see. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. So we're on, we're in cartoony elf today and I'm going to grab my uh, colors that I want to use. I do want to do a leaf pattern on this cloak. I did decide I'm going to go dark with this cloak, just like with the others, but we're going to be doing a lot of a much different thing on this cloak. Um, but yeah, but yeah, I'm a, I'm very much I'm just a walker. Like as far as exercise prior to this, I was telling the, the gang on my stream here, but I used to do weights back in high school. Um, cause I had a gym teacher who really encouraged women to do weights. Uh, pardon me. <laughs> Kundi allergy pill. <laughs> but I haven't done it since then. And, uh, 
not not really not real weights free weights right i've done some weight i did some weight machines during college but that doesn't start luca has started to think about it you should luca but work up to it. Like, I was just telling everybody, like, because people were like, I would blow out my knees because I was describing some of the exercises, um, you know, really deep squats with a weight bar and everything. Um, oh, nice. Sentimental. Cool. Yeah, it is fun. It is fun. I mean, it hurts for the first. <laughs> it hurts the day after for the first couple. But, um, but yeah, like, uh, but, but definitely work up to it. Don't just throw yourself at it because you will break yourself. <laughs> Uh, I definitely worked up to it. The yoga helped more than I thought, actually. All the, the planks and all the stretches that I do. Um, so, all right, let me grab. We're going to do a weird thing today. I, I talked to you guys about how this works, and there was some, some dubiousness. So we've got a very muted ancient oak here, which is a very grayed out bluish green, uh, dark bluish green. And then we've got this really bright, intense naga green. Now, a cool thing about these two colors is that if you mix them, you can use this one as your base and work up to a really vibrant green that really pops and it works. It actually works. So, so yeah, I'm going to demo that on her cape. Um, and we are going to do some, I do want to do a lot of leaf patterns on her cape. Uh, so I'm not going to go crazy with the highlights cause I'm going to want to, um, put freehand back here, but, uh, we'll at least get a starting point on it. Hutch, uh, it's in the mail. Like it's out for delivery today. I'm so excited. I'm, I'm super happy because I finished writing my second novel on like two days ago. <laughs> and if it had, if the box admittedly had come on the weekend, I would have totally been derailed off of that. So I am kind of glad the box was late because the second book needed to be completed. And that feels like a huge weight off of me. Now I'm looking at future writing projects and I'm just like, oh, I can write anything. <laughs> Instead of rehashing the books that I've been wrestling with for a decade. Literally. All right. So yeah, exciting times, folks. Exciting times. Um, I think we're going to take Kiki to the ocean this weekend, too. For the first time. Because we have to... It's going to be hot. It's going to be really hot. But at the ocean here in California, it's actually quite a bit cool, cooler. So she would probably enjoy that and she would enjoy running with the other dogs on the beach. So we may do that. Oh, you're assembling. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I know sushi boy, right? Like if I was still in Texas, I was thinking about that last night because I, I like to complain about how cool, how cold it is here. <laughs> it's supposed to get up to 90 this weekend. And I was like, yes. <laughs> so I like the heat. Uh, and I used to do my walks in the evening, you know, speed walking to get my heart rate up. I used to do my walks when it was 102 out. Like I would go outside at 8 PM and it would be 102, like during the heat waves. And I would still make myself walk. So I, I have done, you know, I've, I've, I've womaned up as far as that goes. Like I can take it, but it would be a lot less fun, right? Like last night going outside here where it was like 68 or 67 degrees. It's just great when you're just like jogging. You're, it just feels fantastic. So I can't complain. I think it, that as I work more running into my regimen, uh, I'm going to complain a lot less about how cold it is in California. Yeah, 88 at 11. Uh, yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, you have the same problem. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry that you're suffering, Sentimental. I'm sorry. Yeah, when it gets to 100, that's like, then I then I start like going, okay, this is hot. This is hot. I need some shade and maybe some AC. But I can tolerate it. <laughs> You'll survive. You have to survive. I have to see you at ReaperCon. You hate the heat? Yeah, the heat is, for me, I've always hated the cold. Like, I'm one of those people. I don't know. I call you guys polar bears who like the cold so much, but I don't, I don't know what, what I would call myself... What's that? What's a heat loving thing? I guess a lizard. Lizards versus polar bears. That does not sound like an even competition. <laughs> oh my gosh, Shadow Spawn. Yeah, I because the heat wave, right? The crazy heat wave. Like, and that's just dangerous. That's just dangerous. Like for people whose ACs go out and everything and older people. Just too bad. All right, I am so clogged in my greens today. I'm trying to mix up these colors. So we're doing just a straight up ancient oak for the base. 
And then I'm going to do a one ancient oak with, uh, I think, three or four naga green. Yeah, 100, 142 is crazy. 103, uh, yuck, yeah, because you're down in New Orleans, New Orleans, right? New Orleans, said the American way. But New Orleans is the way it's actually said, right? Right? Quindy is a native. She would know. Yes. So, yeah. So, what I'm learning then is do not go to New Orleans in the summer. Because <laughs> humidity, right? Yeah, the, with the index. All right. So, we're going to do that. And we're going to mix these two together, even though they seem very, very antithetical and very different from each other, which they are. Yeah. Oh, Canadian wildfire ship. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like Arizona. I will admit I like the desert. Like, I hate it because my I, my skin and hair get so dry, but I, I love the temperatures. I love the way it, love the way it smells too. I love, I love like just... When I was, I visited my parents in Arizona this past um, spring, it was March, and uh, it was just like, it hit like 75 or 78 as I was driving Kiki as we started home, and it was just like we're out in the desert, and this like really nice and toasty, and I cranked down the window and feel the sun on my arm, it was just lovely, compared to with, it was still really cold back in, um, here in the Bay Area. All right, so I'm going to pop just a little bit of water into here couple drops into the Naga mix and just one into the Ancient Oak. I'm kind of split on how I want to paint my nids. Like I know the colors I want to use, but I was going to use MSP, but then I was like, well, should I use Chimera and MSP? Should I use... The problem is I have too many dang paint lines now. That is definitely the problem. That is the problem with getting too many darn paints because I'd like to kind of... I need to figure it out. Maybe I'll use scale color and MSP. All right. So the first time when you, you take that bright Naga green and you mix just one drop of the ancient oak in and you're like, oh, you get this muted, a little bit muddy green. And you're like, eh? but no, no, stay with me. Stay with me. We're going to do this. It really comes up really cool. Oh, yeah, that is sad. Worse problems than too many paints. This is true. true. Totally first world problem here. I probably will use... Oh, yeah, for air quality. Yeah. Yeah, my, my mom and dad are in Wisconsin, but they're lower down there near the Illinois border. And mom said... Last time I asked her, she said they'd just gotten a lot of haze. It wasn't too bad. All right, so we're going to pop this in. Now this color is going to look really nice with the hair because you've got that contrast. Because um, this is a bluey green, and then you've got that that orangey, uh, reddish orange. So the blue and the green are um, a good complement, a near-perfect complement for the hair color. Do, 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 do. I could use a bigger brush, but I want to get around this bow. And I'm going to do the inside of the cape and the outside the same color this time. Because I might want to do the freehand on the inside a little bit too. Don't know. Haven't decided yet. Yeah. Smell and taste the smoke. Yeah. Yeah, we get the the air quality index here too. It's always on my weather report. Yeah, no no AC with that sort of heat is terrible. Oh, that's awful. I should check on my mom then. Oh, yeah, tip of Michigan Lower Peninsula, uh-huh. I bet. I'm sorry. Sorry, you guys. I'm sorry that Canada is spewing its... I mean, usually we blame it for, like, the really cold weather in the winter, but... I guess we get to blame Canada for the smoke this time. Sorry to any Canadians in the chat. Yeah, yeah, I'll probably do some, I'll do some stuff here. We'll figure it out. And I may change my mind and decide to go and do a different take on this for the interior. 
But for now, I just want to get it blocked in, then we can make some decisions. I don't mind. I am a painter who does not mind painting over something. Uh, these days, I start painting by the seat of my pants a lot, where I'm just like, eh, I think I'm going this way, and I just do it. And if I if it doesn't work or I get a better idea, I just change it. I mean, that's the great thing about acrylic paint, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep, lots of puppy poop. Got to pay attention to the pupper. Keep an eye. Keep a sharp eye. Because if they're not sleeping and they're not directly eating, they're pooping. <laughs> uh, it's so true. I do not miss those days. Uh, not a lot. We're just chatting. Chatting about the horrible heat index and air quality indexes for the U.S. right now. Um, we got the heat wave going on. But mostly also talking about how um, I tend to paint a lot just kind of off the cuff these days. So I'll get just kind of a basic idea where I want to go and I'll just start. And I don't mind painting over stuff. I mean, it's not really that much time wasted when you've only got a base coat down. And usually, usually I'll start um, working out the parts of the model that I, that I more like have an idea for. And then, you know, if I end up having to like, if I decide I want to go, for instance, an off white with the inside of this cape and go keep the dark green for the outside later, I'll just paint over it. It's not a big deal. You have to put so many coats. People are always worried about globbing up detail, but when you thin your paint, even just a little, you have to put so many coats on to actually lose detail that, you know, seriously, you could repaint a model five times. Ask me how I know. <sighs> oh, Velociraptor, yep, yep. Well, that's where, that's where redirecting, Raven. So always have a toy. I, I taught my, um... My husband uh, had never had a puppy before because his mom was allergic when he was a kid, so they had never had any fuzzy animals. Um, but I just got him, like, one of those floppy skinnies toys, the ones without stuffing, the long ones, um, and uh, just told him, keep it in your pocket, and whenever she goes for you with the teeth, substitute the toy. And, you know, praise her when she plays with the toy and encourage her and play with her with it so that she learns that, the toy is what she has to chew, not you. But yeah, I had I had scars until she was probably nine months. Because I'm really thin-skinned. He's not. He, uh, he didn't have a puppy scar after, I think, five or six months. But she kept tagging me, and it took very little. All right, I'm going to have to actually get my brush in a decent shape after this. Ah. There. Yeah, yeah. Watch out for the water, bo water bottles, though. Make sure they're the tough plastic. The really thin ones, I found out very alarmingly, um, she could rip up and eat pieces of. So, of course, they're dumb. They don't know what they're not supposed to eat yet. Yeah. But, yeah, the water bottles, she really, Kiki really loved them when she was a baby. They like the crinkly noise. But yeah, just something that you can keep in your pocket so that you always have it. Because it's all about consistency. Yeah, and lots of chew toys. Luckily, before they get the adult teeth, they can't really destroy a lot. But they, a lot of shepherds are destroyers. Kiki was not a destroyer until her adult teeth came in, and then she, like, decided she needed to destroy every single toy she owned. I was very sad because I thought I was finally going to have a dog that could have a dog bed and not eat it. <laughs> yeah, not. <laughs> Although she doesn't touch. Yeah, it's in a sock, so it'll be cool. Yeah, it'll be fine. Although the worry about the sock is then that you're teaching your dog that socks are toys, but you know what? They're cheap, so go for it. If it works for you, it works. People will always have, like, advice for you regarding your dog. And you should always take it with a grain of salt. Because everybody's situation is different. And every dog is different. Just like people. But yeah, we had the, a bad experience with the whole, if you use this as a toy, your dog will then decide that it is always a toy. With um, one of our past shepherds, who's passed away now, Thorn. Thorn was a devil. He was a demon dog. Um, but we got him some of, because he was a power chewer, we got him those toys made of ballistic nylon. 
So then one day he got a hold of my uh, husband's um, hiking backpack, which was made of ballistic nylon. So he thought it was a toy and it was dead. It was dead. Um, just water. Just water, Raven. Because uh, MSP, okay, if you didn't know, I'm the person who actually created this paint line, like from the ground up. So MSP is formulated with Flow Improver already in it. So the reason for that is, is then that you can just use water. Like we wanted it to be super easy to work with MSP. Um, so that's why we, that's why I formulated it with the water and we tested the flow improver mixes. Uh, so water alone, um, sometimes I will use a mixture that has a little additional flow improver in it, but that's it. Like, I don't like the use, I don't like to use mediums. Usually I don't like to use, um, I really don't like to use drying retarders. Uh, I don't find I need them. So Yeah, they have become more crafts. I, that was why I was so surprised when I gave Kiki one to play with and she immediately had like little bits off of it. I was like, Ugh, I don't need her to eat one of those and end up with a intestinal blockage that costs $2,000, you know, to fix and a surgery. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Kong stuff is good because it's tough, right? Yeah, the Kong not teddy bear is good. Yeah. All right, cool, cool, cool. We're we're there. We've still got a little bit of a, um, an in, you can see the inconsistent coat here. So, and that's just because I've thinned it. So I'll wait for this to dry a bit. I'm gonna think about what I want to do for the rest of this a little bit. I think a lot of leather. Maybe we'll do a lighter golden leather, um, on her. And I think I want to do these in green, too. I want to repeat the colors around the model. So if I'm going to do a lot of brown and light brown on the leather, then I want to uh, go here. I don't often do light leather, so it would be a good change to do it. I'll just have to figure out how to introduce some contrast here and there. All right. All, yeah, all, all Reaper paints are MSP. Shadow Spawn, like it might be MSP Core versus MSP Bones versus MSP, um, oh, and Pathfinder. Pathfinder does as well. When you contract with Reaper to do a paint line, like you get our base formula. You don't, yeah, you, that's what we start with. The colors are all, you know, different, but, but the base formulas, um, that's what we do. It's part of the thing. It's part of what you get. Because if you didn't want some variant on MSP, you would not have hired us. <laughs> you would have hired Vallejo or Coat d'Arms or somebody else, right? So, all right. Just kind of looking around, seeing. I think I'm going to want to throw maybe some off-white in here somewhere, too. Because, you know, darks and lights. I always like to vary the dark and light over the whole surface of the model. Well, I can do another coat on the hood. And it is taking a while to dry today. Wonder where our humidity is. Yeah, it's supposed to be a beautiful 75 degrees here today, but then it's supposed to shoot upward and get hot. Kiki will be sad. We do not have AC. So when it hits 90 here, um, pretty much I close up the house because we have pretty good insulation. And if I keep the house closed, the inside will go to 78, or on a 90 degree day, the inside might go to 80. We do also have um, a small, like, movable AC unit that lives in our bedroom during the really hot part of the summer. So I can always put Keeks in the, uh, in the cool bedroom if I need to. But yeah, it uh, gets quite hot in this house when it's that warm. All right, so we've got a double coat there. I can start on this. Hey, 44 months, Valandar. Thank you. Thank you for that resub. Um, the reason I wouldn't go with dark browns, and it always varies. Like, I could go on about color theory and color composition a lot, Ravencraft. I've got a, I just did a PDF on it for my Patreon um, um, kind of the basics of color composition, but the reason I wouldn't go dark browns on this, which I do normally love dark browns, 
But I like to vary my lights and darks over the figure because it's going to help make everything stand out. A lot of painters just start and they go darker mid with everything and they never put any light colors on. Or they just go mid with everything and they never put a dark or a light color on. Um, but here I'm starting with a pretty dark green. And so even if it's going to come up toward a mid green and it might end up a mid dark, it means that putting more darks on this is not going to make any of the details stand out. So the reason I would go with light leather on this is that, lighter leather on this, is that it will stand out really well against all this dark backdrop. So that's one of the basic rules is I, I always vary my lights and darks across the model. And when I'm choosing, when I'm choosing colors, I am intentionally varying my mid dark light. So this lady who I just um, almost, have almost finished is a great example where I'm doing my red is my mid, my black, the black indigo is my black, and of course the cream is my white, and the skin tone is also a very light color, right? So I could have gone light with the hair, but then I would have, you know, you wouldn't have seen it as well. Um, and if I would have just gone red with everything and did not had any really dark colors, it wouldn't have been as striking, right? So yeah, it helps keep the definition in the piece. Yes, yes. What, Miss Spot? Just below the quiver. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, no, that's, um, that's the underside of the quiver. There might be a tiny bit right down under there. Yeah, I'll get it. I'll get that when I align. But yeah, so you can see how, cha how, how alternating and like the roses, the roses had to be lighter. I highlighted them with white because they needed, otherwise they wouldn't have stand, stood out. Right. So, so you can see how that all is working together. So usually I'm like, you've got like dark, mid, light, or, or you've got dark, light, dark, light, dark, light. The only exception here is when I did her fringe here, the light here is up against the arm, which is also light. You see how hard it is to, to see those details because when you start putting those next to each other, it doesn't stand out. Um, so hopefully that helps. Like, so that's one of my base base rules is no matter what colors I pick for the mini, I vary the lights and darks. And that's also the way that you can use two colors that might otherwise kind of clash with each other. Like the one I always mention is green and blue green because they're so close on the color wheel. There's no contrast there. And so they tend to clash. If you throw a mid teal and a mid green on a model, like a mermaid, for example, or some other water creature, they tend to clash pretty bad. Um, but if you make one dark and one mid, then they, then they do fine, you know, or one light and one dark, then they do fine. So the key of mini painting is always, at least on 28s for sure, uh, it's always contrast. And so one way to push contrast is to alternate and make sure that if you're picking a, a red, blue, green color scheme, one of those colors is one of those, maybe the blue is really dark, maybe the, maybe the red is pink, right? Or maybe the green comes up to like seafoam, like doing something like that um, so that you have the contrast that things will stand out. And that's, uh, let's see, so here's another one. So Anubis, let's go for a bigger model now, which I'm still, so here again, I've got a dark, a mid and a light. Um, and the bones come up lighter. The fire is lighter. The face is darker, which is a challenge, right? Cause you have to draw the eye to it, but the, the light around it helps and the detail, the tight detail helps. But since he has dark skin, I went with light wrappings, right? And, um, and a dark staff to go with the bone. And up here, I tried to bring, this is about a mid, the gold up here is more of a mid. So I figured you would like him, sentimental. Yeah, he's really cool. He's from Hera Models. Um, and I've got to keep bring up the base. The basing isn't done, but I'm mixing them. So the way that this will this will roll out then, Raven is is I've got to see what um, how dark I keep this. So this can change, right? Because I'm gonna actually go up lighter with my green right now. This is more like a mid dark, and actually this is a this is a good time to talk about the color wheel. Color wheel, do do do. Color wheel. So the color wheel, despite being um, an in addition to having colors on it, also has a really spiffy little thing, the grayscale. So there's our grayscale, and there's the other half of it. So um, obviously here you're looking at like a mid dark to dark, and this isn't perfect, but it works. You know that's more of a mid. Maybe mid, then light. So what you can do when you have your color on your palette, whether it's in a, a well or a, um, 
or something else is you can kind of move the edge over it and see where it is. So there, if you look, we can see that that value five, actually you can see the edge of it against that green, right? Whereas here you can't see the edge of it. So that means that this is a value four, putting it in the right now in the mid dark to dark, because this is probably gonna be a two. Yeah, you can just see the edges. That's how you do that. It's kitty teeth marks. Yeah, thanks for some. Yeah, Anubis is cool. He's He was a quicker paint job for me, but it was fun. It was fun. Um, yeah, and the reason for that, Kronika, is often lighting. Like when a computer color scheme doesn't work on the model, keep the colors, but try to introduce more light and dark, and usually then you can adapt it. Uh, this is one of the ones I got from Scale Color, uh, one of the Scale Color uh, Kickstarters. But you can also just get them on Amazon or, or anywhere. Like it's a mini color wheel and they, they're like $2.99. Like they're super cheap uh, and worth every penny if you're trying to like understand this stuff, honestly. Um, it helps with color scheme choosing as well. I've talked a lot about um, about color wheels in the Patreon and stuff but and, and on here, but it never hurts to go back over parts of it. So yeah, no problem, Raven. That This is what I do. Like I like to explain. <laughs> I've been doing this, uh, I've been, I went to art school back in the dark ages, um, but I've been painting miniatures since uh, I was a kid. And I, when I repicked it up in college, like I guess I've since then, oh, what year was it? It's been over 25 years of professional mini painting at this point. So I has got the ability to answer questions and I do not mind doing so. That's what this stream is really about. Like, yeah, I paint on it. Um, but, uh, and we chat about food and dogs and weather and, and workouts and whatever else, you know, we're talking about at the time. Um, but I really, uh, the reason I'm here is to answer questions about painting and the paint line and, and even other paint lines, if you want, I, I've used most of them. Ah, you're not normally up. Got it. So you're a, you're like a third shifter. Well, that's cool. Everything's on VOD. Like, uh, you can catch the VOD on Twitch if you miss me, and a lot of people do it that way, or you can go to Reaper's YouTube. Reaper's YouTube has every episode, and I've done over 500 at this point, every episode of every model that I've ever painted. So, ah, nice. Super con. Well, have fun. I don't have a con till Reaper con. Reaper cons over Labor Day. Oh, I see the missed spot. I didn't, it was tilted wrong the, the other way and I was not catching it. Thanks guys. Well, that's why you do a second coat. Oh, nice. Cool, cool. Oh, we're over 700 episodes now? That's insane. How the heck am I still existing? Yeah, ReaperCon's fun. Like, it's chill. We're, we're pretty, in case you haven't figured it out, we're a pretty chill crowd. Um, and uh, people, it's just great. It's a great con to go and just like paint and hang out with other people who paint and meet people who paint who are all really cool. Uh, it's a smaller con, so the community is pretty tight and uh, it's it's good, it's nice. It's like, it's, uh, I enjoy it a lot. And our, our vendor room just keeps getting better. But yeah, if you're into the hobby side, it's definitely, there is gaming, but it's not the main emphasis and never has been. It's always been a con that that focuses on the classes and the competition and just like hanging out and indulging in all things Reaper and miniature painting. So it's just, it's fantastic that way. <laughs> cool. Yeah. 
Yeah, a lot. I mean, the Color Wheel company who owns the copyright to the Color Wheel repackages it for a lot of different art companies. So Daler and Rowney makes sense that they would do one. It's just a nice little thing to have. You can get it just about anywhere. If you get the bigger version, it has like terminology and stuff on it. But I really find that um, the little one is adequate. And it's handy to have it stuck over in the side of my art desk here. So I can just grab it when I need it. There we go. Now we have a nice even coat. Sweet. All right. Now we can start highlighting. Yeah, a lot of cons don't, um, don't emphasize the painting hobby. And that's a sad thing. Because there's a lot of interest in it. Oh, I know where else I can put green. I can put green on the, the bow grip. I like to repeat colors around the model. That's another thing that you do. That's a color composition thing. Just kind of helps balance out the model, make it look like it's all integral. And it helps the eye move around the model to see all the details. By going dark here, that means I have to go lighter here and mid or dark on the rest of the bow. So like alternating again. So I'll probably either do this as bone, this little guard as bone or as metal. Maybe a brass color. Um, so if I do metal there and metal on the, the tips, then I can do a dark wood for the bow. Oh, I missed a mold line. I see it right now. I'm going to fix it. Oh, pigeon. I just put up um, sticky clings to keep the birds from hitting the windows, and I haven't had a bird hit a window since I did it, so yay. All right, now I've got to turn this around to get a good angle at this mold line. It goes right up the bow. And I'm just going to get a light scrape to get it out of there. Yep. Yeah, which is why would they say when you are um, doing color composition, having an odd number of incidences of that of an accent color is the best uh, option. Because uh, our eyes are geared for pattern, for recognition of patterns. It used to help us find food and see danger, so... There we go. Scrape that down. Man, I got to get out my mold line remover. I'm going to be I'm going to be playing with Tyranids tonight. I had to decide if I'm going to be a good girl and do like five gaunts first or if I'm going to just dive into the fun stuff. I know I should be disciplined, guys. I know I should. But I want to I want to paint a hive tyrant. I want to paint a hive tyrant, Kiki. Okay. She's like fwomp. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I bet. Uh, bright color in the arrow feathers, and would you add? I don't know if I would do a cock feather color. Um, it depends on what I'm doing. But yeah, the, the fletchings are a great place for an accent color. Um, since I'm going really red-orange with her hair, I might go with a reddish color, like a red as a complement. It really depends on the rest of how the rest of this goes together. Um, right now, I'm... I'm pretty complimentary as far as it goes you know green like blue green and orange is a very complimentary color scheme um but i'm planning to use a mid tan leather not that color that color like starting here and going up up to more a golden leather like a more natural leather but starting with the griffin golden brown um so that's gonna pop kind of an orangey yellow in there and I'm going to have to take a hard look at what accent color makes sense for the feathers. When I don't want, um, when I don't want another bright color on the model, then I go naturalistic with the feathers. I would go more like cream and black or something, or just cream, um, depending on how I can get it to stand out and what I need right there. I'm also going to have some bra like some brass gold color on here, which is also going to throw a yellow in there. So even metallics, if it's a colored metallic, it counts as that color on the middle, on the model. And I personally don't like having usually more than three strong colors on the model. Um, so 
as I fill in, like right now I've already got this red, orange, and this, this green that I'm doing. So as I fill in, I have to judge whether this turns out being more of a neutral or when I highlight it, if it's going to go more of a golden color, it's going to read as a yellow, in which case I've got a yellow, red, orange, blue, green, or yellow, red, orange, green um, kind of color scheme. So yeah, or black. Yeah. And if black shows up, like if everything around it is light colored Pendrake, I would go, I could go black with fletchings as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, remember though, Raven, it always changes. Okay. So the model, the color you start with, isn't the color you're, it actually looks at the end. The, what determines the color you actually end up with is the amount of space you cover. So let me see if I've got a good example of that. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Kinda. Let me see. I'm trying to figure out if I've got a good, I could use this guy. Kinda. All right. So here's a, just a little model that I've used for various demos. So I started with actually a near black color, but the color that it ends up looking is dark red because I've highlighted up that and covered over a lot of my beginning really, really dark black brown. So no, not on 28 Pendrake. Bigger models, bigger models you can string. I, I find it a waste on 28. It's always nice to see in a competition model, but I find it just, I know it annoys me. It annoys me. There's not a great material for it at 28 millimeter that looks in scale to me. And that bo that bothers me. I always, you know, I like to be in scale. I like to be more natural looking. So uh, even at 28, so usually not. David's a great one for stringing bows, but even he has moments where he just like curses at it. But yeah, so like my base color here, when you first saw this, you would have thought I was maybe painting a, a really like a brown black cape. But then as I highlighted it, now it looks dark red. So even though this looks dark green right now, as I add highlights to it, it's going to look like a slightly lighter green. And starting here, I'm going to bring it up probably to something like, let's see, something golden. Where's my blonde hair? I'm going to bring it more toward a golden color. I'm going to mix some of this into it to make more of a, 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 you know, like a natural leather, like more of a yellowy leather. But I like to, when I work with lighter colors, I like to start dark and work light. It's a, just a, something I, I like to do. And it depends on the model and on the specific color, because like with Sophie here, I wanted this red to be bright. And so I started with much more of a lighter red because I knew that if I started too dark, it would be too hard to bring it all up. Yes, exactly, Ravencraft. And the thing that determines that is the amount of area you cover. So, so if I want this guy, this guy, when he, when I base coated, he was this, uh, well, he was pink actually. When I base coated and then I put a yellow glaze over it and made it orange. Um, but uh, he was originally this kind of orangey, burnt orangey color. But because I brought all the yellow in, now this is reading yellow. And the guideline that you look at for this is that 50% of each like surface, if you were to break out each fold from this cloth, 50% of that fold needs to be the color you want it to look. So I needed to bring 50% of each fold up to this yellow. And when I did, the color shifted from an orangey color to yellow even though I have the orange color still as used for shadows. So does that, if that makes sense. So when you are painting any area, kind of look at it and whether you're, whether you're painting it fold by fold or whether you're painting it more in a general manner, you gotta like say, okay, so 50% of this, if I want it to be bright yellow, 50% of this needs to be that yellow, 50% or more depends, but 50% is my benchmark. And if it's like, it's how people go wrong highlighting red. Um, because you know, you, a lot of people highlight their red and then suddenly it looks orange. It's also how people go long, wrong highlighting black because they highlight the black and suddenly it looks gray instead of black. Um, so yeah, right. So I'm going to bring the highlights up to that, but there's still going to be shadows that are that darker tan and it's going to make the whole thing shift more mid light and less, less, uh, mid. Yeah. Base color will affect it, but it's all the, the ratio. How much of the surface is medium red here? About 
And so it looks like that more vibrant red. And uh, so in general, just use your gut. Like if, if I had been highlighting Sophie and she had started to look really orange, I would have had to knock it back and add more red back in and knock out some of the orange. Like you can usually tell. I mean, sometimes you're way too far into it by the time you do tell, but that's what glazing is for. That's what putting, you know, a glaze of, a, of the red back over the orange is, knock it down um, and, and come back toward the red. Uh, so yeah, but it's all, it's, I call it surface control. I don't know if there's a real term for it. Um, but essentially it's just the keeping a conscious eye on how much of the area is, is registering the color you want it to look. And sometimes you're just kind of working at it and you're not sure. Like here, I'm not sure how dark I'm going to want this to go. If I want it to read more of this color, I'll leave a lot of it and make my highlights smaller and I'll add in a, a separate shadow that's even darker than the green. It's just, it's not a mixed detergent, it's just ancient oak. This is ancient oak. It's flat ancient oak. Yeah, and if you're completely covering over a base color, you should have just covered, you should have just started lighter. <laughs> or darker, depending on what you're doing. But yeah, there are some colors that I will start uh, mid and I will shade and then highlight. And there are some colors that I always want to start dark and work up. Most skin tones are like that. Let's bring this up a little bit. Warm it up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, if nothing else, Richard, just um, use that brush for, as you say, for details and, um, and fine work, thinned paint. Um, but yeah, the, the great thing about these, these more expensive brushes is that they, they level you up because they give you the control that you're lacking with a lot of other brushes. And that is the reason they're worth it. And if you're worried about ruining brushes, then just keep them in reserve and only use them for small details and maybe some some fine layering if you're having trouble getting good good layering or textures with uh, with a bigger or more coarse brush. Yeah, well that's what glazing is for. Glazing is when you thin down paint to a really, really like almost colored water and you just put it over the top of everything to kind of shift a color, Raven. Um, yeah, and I mean, everything takes time, right? I mean, Every, I don't even know, like, I just started CrossFit. I don't know the terminology. I don't know any of it. You know, I don't know the warm-up routine. I don't know, you know, inexperience is, is working against me right now. Um, I just started knitting when I turned uh, 50 last year. And, uh, you know, knitting is, uh, also, I'm a noob, right? I don't, I make a lot of mistakes. Uh, I don't know, always know how to fix them. Uh, I chose, choose the wrong yarn. You know, I, I do this kind of stuff, right? I have a needle size that's too big or too small. Uh, it, and it's all just doing it, asking questions, learning. Like it's all, you get you get there. Never be sad to be inexperienced because like you haven't developed any bad habits yet. <laughs> it's all fresh and new. That's why I like to tackle things um, in my life. I like to, re to start a new thing every once in a while because it reminds me of what it was like to be a beginner at this hobby. And since I teach so much, that's a very valuable mindset for me to have because I can empathize with the people who, who like you, are just trying to expand their knowledge base. Um, we get a lot of people who are either new to the hobby or coming back to the hobby after sometimes as much as 20 years away from it. Um, it's the kind of hobby that you do that, you know. Yeah. Yeah, pink can be because that their other thing is like 50, 50 to sixty percent is fair. Um, pink can be a hard one because the eye just snags on it for some reason. For some reason, we really like pink. Pink can overwhelm red very easily. But yeah, when in doubt, keep your highlights small if you don't want to overwhelm a base color. So here I am going more broad. I'm warming it up. See it? See the shifting color? So this is bringing in that really bright naga and mixing it with my ancient oak. 
And this is kind of a transition stage color where I start to, I still have that cold color in the shadows, but I'm starting to warm it up where I'm gonna highlight it. Yeah, well that's a nice one you can then, Raven. Hello there, miniatures den. Somebody told me you were uh, you were kind of thinking about maybe actually going to the gym at some point. I did my first CrossFit class last night, miniatures den. I'm gonna get like pumped. I want to get buff. My old lady self. But yeah, I don't know what your work days are, Raven, but if you have weekends off, um, I do my own stream on Saturday at about later than this uh, on my own channel. Twitch.tv slash painting big. And uh, that's at a 3.30 USA Central. So it's much later in the day. Then a little bit later in the day than this anyway. Alrighty, so we're just bringing that up real. You can see, and this this is where you get kind of a really cool, almost like, almost an opal effect because you've got that blue tone there, but then you're bringing it up much warmer, but you're keeping your blue tone. So, uh, <laughs> you might die anyway. <laughs> Hold on, I missed, I missed the sardonic comment. I had to do a sexy joke and die. <laughs> you mean lifting your girl isn't enough workout for you? Oh, I'm retired. Okay. Oh, that's right, right, right. Yep, Lucas here. There goes the neighborhood. I want to have missed it. All right. <laughs> that's always the case with Luca, though. That's cool. I can, I can, I can deal. I can deal. Luca, I get my Leviathan box today. I'm so excited. I know you're not a big Games Workshop fan, but, uh, I'm, I'm excited because I like Tyranids. <laughs> you wish you missed it too. Hey lady. A couple of minis. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait to, um, to do the Hive Tyrant and the Carnifex. There's some nice, there's some cool new, the cool new unit. I kind of like those, the look of those guys too. So, <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I'm excited. All right, going to put a little bit of this warm green down here, but not a lot. We're going to leave a lot of cold back here. <laughs> More knowledge you have, less tools you, you, you need. Yep, yep. Yeah. Yeah. I use a kneeling chair Raven and it helps me with my posture. Like a lot of times with hands going numb, it's not actually your hands, it's your shoulder position. Cause when you hunch over, you restrict circulation and stuff. So with my sitting chair, my kneeling chair, my, my husband actually got me out of these. Um, it's easier. Like I still do a little, but I keep my back a lot straighter with this chair. I didn't know there were dwarves in the Leviathan box. <laughs> oh man. But yeah, um, I tend to do Raven at max, my average painting, like if I'm, on the weekend, if I have time, um, like I, I can go for an hour and a half, but that's like, then I need to get up, stretch, take a break. Um, more often though, in the evening, I'm more like I sit down for half an hour, 45 minutes, and I just try to put some, some paint on the mini. Um, I've got, I also like to play video games with my husband, so I kind of have to split my evening time if I'm going to do both, if I'm going to get some painting in, but also play games with him. So... So yeah, I tend to, these days it, it tends to be more like 30, 45 minutes unless, unless it's the weekend and I'm like trying to sit down and really like get some working on a competition model or something like that. And then I will in the afternoon, I might do an hour and a half stretch, but I, I do, I do a lot of stretching. Um, I, I have taught as I get older, I just, I have to, uh, so I do a lot of stretches just to limber up and get myself up out of the chair and moving around. <laughs> <Zephyr. laughs> yeah, I'm 
There we go, just a little bit to bring in that warmth there. So you can see the kind of cool shimmery look, right? And I don't often do this, but but you can get that cool shimmer when you do like a, like a blue to green fade, like it kind of starts to look almost iridescent. As we go up a little higher, it'll, it'll get more pronounced. If I were to pop some purple into this, it would really look iridescent, which is a really, it's a cool effect and you don't have to like overdo it, but you just get that natural kind of shimmery look, um, which is one of the things I like about this too. <laughs> oh, miniatures done. Too personal. I don't, I don't, <clears throat> and tell, Luca. My goal is to be able to keep up with him on hikes. Because when we were in the Sierras, I was definitely the huffing, huff, <laughs> you know, very much having out of breath trying to keep up with Kiki and David. And I was sick of that. Like, there there comes a point where I, where I just can't deal with myself. <laughs> where I'm just like, you lazy jerk, get out of your chair and start doing some workouts. <laughs> yeah, so you get it. Yeah, see, I just turned 51, like, just a week ago, Raven. Yeah, it's definitely that time. Like, I know that if I didn't, I, that if I don't take steps now to, like, get myself more fit, it's just going to get harder. And, uh, and I'm not, and I'm going to be starting from a worse point. So that's why I got motivated and decided to start doing the gym. And I do, I want to do, like, when we go to Hawaii, I want to be able to hike and, and not be out of breath all the time, right? I want to be able to enjoy and climb the volcano and and do cool stuff, right? And not be, not feel like I'm so out of shape. Yeah, you just wanna be able to walk your dog, exactly. Yeah, and with shepherds, for sure. <laughs> I mean, interesting. As if it, I already know you're typing something. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah 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 i get it we're all starting from somewhere right just you know if you're when you're recovering from something i mean i i went through a lot of surgery there were there were many many years ago i went through several surgeries in a row and it was kind of rough rebuilding from that too so i feel you I think the most, the thing is to just understand that like you've got to maybe start at a much lower level than you, you would like, right? Um, and uh, not to get impatient with yourself and to give yourself a lot of grace. And that's a true, even like with anything that you start from zero or, or start from a place of like where you're not as, as fit or as knowledgeable or as anything, even with the painting stuff, you know, just go easy on yourself. You'll get there. You still have to do it to get there. There we go. Yeah, I'm liking that green. That's pretty. So that's how that's how this comes up where you'd think that, the, that this would be a terrible green to highlight this other one with. But it actually turns out to give you a really interesting effect. And now we're going to go up straight up to Naga Green. I think I have the time. Yeah, I've got time. Yeah, healthy, stressy. Yeah, I have fruit, Zachariah. Because I am a stress eater big time. But happily, I haven't been stressing lately, so it's good. Nice, Gary. Yeah, probably because the walk is a good pack, um, a good pack activity. So if they did have issues, like they managed to, you know, the walk was a good, essentially community building for you, a pack building exercise. There are some trainers that really advocate for that. But yeah, that's actually, I'm pretty happy that we got Kiki and she's, she's a big girl now. She's 75 pounds. She can book it. Um, but, uh, it actually gets my husband out and walking, which is good. yet raven like if i decide to go heavy into the red orange red orange orange red and green um then i might pop some fall leaves in there because i did choose that hair color for her and it would let me repeat 
Um, another way to do it would be to start with green leaves at the top and go into color changing down here and then brown at the very bottom. That might be fun. I'm going to be painting a lot of leaves. I need to figure out, what I do need to figure out is what color of leaf, or what, sorry, what type of leaf I'm going to do. Because maple leaves? No. <laughs> I might make up a fantasy leaf. <laughs> Something that's easy to paint. You think some, you need some pack building? Miniatures <laughs> to end. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you did. Studio DKS. Hello, Derek. Derek Schubert sneaking around in the chat. Look out, Derek. Like, Miniatures Den is here. It's going to get kind of raunchy. Well, it already has gotten. <laughs> Don't ruin it with a follow-up comment. <laughs> uh, Quindy plus Luca equals hilarity. Oh, yeah. Hot pavement is a thing. I was kind of, we got Kiki at the um, end of last summer, so she had a lot of walks in the fall and winter. It was a lot better. Yeah, you could do that. You could do moss. All right, so now we've got, now, oh my gosh. But can you see the transition? Like this color that looked so muddy and kind of not, not pretty earlier on when we mixed it? Now looks like totally in place once you put the whole triad together. And once again, this was actually one drop of Ancient Oak into three drops of Naga Green. Um, so you want to, because the Ancient Oak has black in it and blue in it, it tends to like be high. I talked about diffusion yesterday. Different pigments have different diffusion. Um, and the high diffusion pigments are the one where you can put a tiny bit of it into a color and it just changes the whole color. And blue is one of those and black is one of those. So... Yes, color relations. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes, yeah, Luca, Luca uses different terminology than me, I'm sure. And he talks about things in a different way. And that's why it's, it's great that you should also watch. You should watch a lot of different painters because the way that I tackle stuff isn't the way that everybody's going to tackle stuff. Do you want to say hi? You want to say hi, big dog? Come here. Keeks, keeks. Oh, you're on the wrong side. You're in the wrong side. I thought you wanted to say hi to chat. Come here. Here. Up. Yay! We have chat. Good girl. Oh, you've got an eyeball girl. There you go. Good girl. Luca paints like the old masters if they use really bright paint. <laughs> or really high contrast paint. I guess some of them did. Some of them did. Yeah, it's my girl. She saw a squirrel or something out there, Luca, and she had her ears like all up. She actually looked like a noble shepherd for once instead of an earless shepherd. There we go. Oh, oh, the ears disappeared again. Oh, ears, ears. <laughs> Silly ears, girl. Mm, good girl. Oh, do you want to, yeah, do you want to scruffle? Oh, there we go. There we go. There's a noble shepherd look. Oh, yep. <laughs> you dork. All right, keekers. All right. Can you off? Off? Oh, no. Not, off is not lick. Off is not lick. Oh. Good girl. Good girl. Yes, um, we have 12 minutes to Luca. So you got to keep yourself busy for 12 more minutes, geeks, okay? 12 more minutes, then we'll take our walk. She wants to, she wants me to go out for a walk. She wants the opposite twisted almost. She is so feisty lately. <laughs> Miniature's dead. She is a, yeah, she's a sweetie. My girl's a snuggler. In the morning when David lets her out of her pen, um, which we still have her in because otherwise she would jump on the bed at night. Uh, for bedtime, she has a pen. But uh, she'll she'll immediately grab my slipper. So one day she brought both, but she'll grab my slipper and she'll bring it to me in the bed. And then she'll lie down on the bed and, and get scruffles. Like you, sometimes she actually collapses on my lap, which is funny. But yeah, so now once I'm going up to the brighter green, I'm going to go a lot smaller area. Oh, you're seven. So yeah, well, at eight weeks, they're going to like, they might be up by 10 or 12. Depends on the shepherd. Yeah, the world according to Kiki. So Naga is a pretty decent coverage green when you've got, um, 
when it's at full strength, but when you thin it, it goes nice and translucent. Um, this may be a little bit too much if I want to build this up faster. But I think I want to go a little cautious because I don't want a lot. See, it's just a little bit pop. Um, but yeah, we're gonna, since we're going to go over a lot of this with freehand, I'm not going to spend too much time. I just want to kind of show you guys kind of how these colors come together. Then I have to figure out how I want to do the leaves. I might do a simplified um, maple and just do like three lobes instead of like all the extra. Because it's... Uh, going to be small. Yeah, Kiki stood up at, let's see. Okay, I think Kiki had TP head at 10 weeks. I have pictures. I have pictures. Hold on. Oh, I took a birthday picture of her. A birthday picture of her yesterday. Sorry, my phone is dirty. We got a nice picture of her yesterday. That's my girl. That's my whole girl. Pin oak leaves. I'd have to go look. So Kiki when she was a baby. Here we go. Kiki as a baby. That's what my little girl looked like when she was that age. <laughs> yep. Except she's wiggly. She's too wiggly when she's done. So see Kiki when she was a baby. This is about nine weeks. There she is. There she is when she was just sitting. She still sit, has a totally sloppy sit, by the way. There's a baby girl. <laughs> I know, right? So cute. Oh, and then and then she loves she still loves leaves. Yeah. Yep. So Yes, the thinning is what uh, gives you that translucency, Raven. Hold on, where's uh I wanna see I wanna find her teepee head. When her ears started to stand, they got they went up on top of her head and stood up in a teepee. We call it teepee head. Hold on. Where's my teepee head? Oh, there's them there's them starting. Starting to stand up. Just starting a little bit. And then and then where, where's our teepee head? Oh, this is the bad ear day. We're having a bad ear day today. And then where's my teepee head? Here's kind of a teepee head. There we go. So they, they got up and they leaned together for a long time before they straightened up. <laughs> but that was her at about 12 weeks, I want to say. 12 or 15. But yeah, and then when she, then she got to be, she got to have proper TP head. This is more at 16, 18 weeks. You can see how her color changes as she grows. Yeah. But there, I know. So we've done our kiki. We've done our kiki stuff. I think I don't have any other like really cool ones. Not in here. Yep, yep. She's fine. Keekster. So that was my keekster. My GW box says it will be here by 7 p.m. I hope it comes earlier. The UPS truck is usually here around 11 and 12. <laughs> Yeah, I got to get your doggy dose. But yeah, as far as thinning the paint, when you thin the paint, then a little bit of your undercolor is going to show through, right? So not only do you get a smoother um, transition, but you and you can build it up slowly. You have control. Uh, and it's also not clumpy paint, right? It's really, really smooth over the top of the model. So this is essentially, that's why when you do the technique called layering, you're building up layers of translucent color on the model so that you can get a particular finish. Um, if you do it really thin, then you can get it to look like a smooth blend. Uh, with Usually you need a little bit of glazing, but uh, if you leave it thicker, then you can start suggesting texture. So if I were to leave this, um, let's see, where's my model that I did texture on lately? Texture, where's got, who's got texture? Oh man, I don't even remember, oh yeah. So if you leave the suggestion of brush strokes, see the little lines? You can get a very a brushed texture if you want to. So, and if you stipple, you create the appearance of wool. And you can do those textures on 28s. They work. So, and this is our Burgermeister that we painted. Uh, 
Ah, uh, yeah, Shepherd Husky is a pretty common mix. If he's really high energy, you'll know. But yeah, so you can do that with um, when you're doing this sort of thing. And I do recommend, we talked about this a little bit, but I do recommend going across the fold if you're doing this sort of thing. Um, if you go up and down, it just looks like, like the eye will pick that up because the human eye likes patterns, right? We talked about that earlier. So the pattern recognition on our eyes is really, really high, which means that if you're using a brush stroke that goes up and down, a fold that is already that shape, the eye is not going to be fooled at all. Like it's just going to see brush strokes. Um, whereas if you go across the grain, like I'm doing here, you can confuse the eye and you also um, can leave that suggestion of texture and it'll read that way. Um, so yeah. Gotta keep an eye. Got five minutes. Five minutes to Luca. Five minutes to Luca. I do do the edge highlight, the, the, the infamous GW edge, edge highlight um, for edges often if I'm working it up. But when I do it with uh, thinned paint, it blends in better. Once it dries, you don't really see the hard edge. You just get that little pop. <laughs> oh, Quindy. Oh. <laughs> Quindy with it. Wow. Like, are you going to ban yourself? <laughs> sakes alive the talk in this channel I tell you you guys I think it's gonna be a good day I need to work on my patreon today it's patreon day because the book has sucked up so much of my time re recently and I have to get back at it tomorrow I have to start editing because I have to pass it off to my editor on Monday the first editor Hey, Turgeon, are you still in chat? Snort. Is that what they tell you, miniatures? <laughs> They're just trying to spare your feelings. Oh, um, do you want to beta read? Because if you do, then you can read the new book. A month or two in advance. You're reporting this stream. <laughs> I will ban all of you. <laughs> okay, cool. You're officially on my beta reading team then, Trojan. Uh, it'll probably be uh, mid July when you when you when I contact you guys. And if you want to do, do uh, essentially be on the ARC team and leave a review on launch day, that we can, that's cool. It's kind of all the same in, in the end. At least at this stage of my writing career. So I'm going to leave a little bit more color out here. So you can just see that kind of like... Now there comes a point where this obviously is only a medium shade, right? So when we look at these, we determine that this was... Um, around a four, or sorry, the mix was around a four. This is probably around a two. Um, and if we look at our grayscale, this will probably be around, I'm gonna guess around a seven. I'm gonna guess around a seven. Let's get our grayscale in, in sight and pop it on here. Oh, no, 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 it's around six, okay. So because this is only six, obviously we've got all these values that are much lighter. So if we want the cloak to look uh, more realistically highlighted, there comes a time when you must add something with white in it or, or yellow, yellow. If you want a really poppy, really pop uh, intense green, use like something like lemon yellow to bring it up. Um, but since we're gonna do a lot of freehand, I'm just not gonna bother with it right now. I just wanted to kind of show you 
Uh, right now, my beta readers, I think I'm okay on Richard. I think that I want, although you know what, drop me an email because um, I want I want an ARC team. Um, ARC is advanced reader copy. It's an ARC team is what they call it. So essentially you get a free copy of the book like a month early as and I ask you to leave a review on launch day, your honest opinion. And then essentially that helps me get reviews right away on the new book. So I'll be doing that as well. But drop me an email at um, Ann, A-N-N, at, or sorry, A-N-N-E, at aebeckerwrites.com. I think I have that written down. But yeah, drop me an email at, doo -doo, I scribbled it, Ann at aebeckerwrites.com. And I will uh, add you to my list. You bet. You bet. You can be my next biggest fan. <laughs> <laughs> the nature's dead don't you dare one star me luca <laughs> i'll tell reaper to send you nothing but dwarfs no matter what you order <laughs> okay cool well you can drop me an email too then zachariah I don't, although i i don't know if your email is still the same from what i used to have so you probably should like, and I like to have everybody in one email. The Anne at A.E. Becker writes is my official, official author email, so. <laughs> you already do. <laughs> oh, that's true. It doesn't even deserve dwarves. We have some sexy dwarves. Maybe Ron just doesn't send those to him. I'm pretty sure he'd be okay with anything other than dwarves at this point. All right, so where are we? Yeah, it's 11.01. I guess I have to hand it off. But anyway, so you guys kind of see how that, that bright green can be used to highlight that really muted bluish green. And it actually looks really cool. Like, I like how, I love how shimmery it looks. I've always liked this effect. So that's a neat effect that you can use, especially it's really good on magic cloaks if you want to kind of like give that idea that it's kind of neat. Like I said, you could use even a little bit of blue or even purple um, to darken certain shadows and get an even more psychedelic look. Um, but yeah. Irish pixies. Oh, Lordy. You guys. You guys. You could just break me. You break me more than CrossFit. And that says something, man. That was crazy. Alrighty. I. <laughs> I'm not even going there. <sighs> Mostly because I don't want to actually show up at Monte San Savino next year and have the first thing Luca says to my husband be something horrible and sexually suggestive. Although I guess I can't really avoid that now, can I? Have Having brought it up. Yeah, you break me more than CrossFit. Yeah, you'll do it anyway. <laughs> Great, I'll warn David. <laughs> we won't make it this year. Because we've got, we're going to Hawaii instead. But um, next year, I think that Monte's, Monte's on the table for next year. So Italy, Italy for next year for me and David. That's what we're kind of roughly planning anyway. <laughs> You'll be there. That's good. That's good. Hey, no problem, Raven. It's nice to meet you. Good luck with the puppy. Remember, this too shall pass. In a hulu skirt. <laughs> Arcan. Yeah, I know, right? You, you sign on to this stream and you get hit with all of this. When Miniatures Den is in the chat, it all goes sideways. Just saying. Anyway, tomorrow, folks, should you show up again after this horrible browbeating of chat, um, we will be working on a much cooler, uh, color-wise, um, we we'll working on our barbarian, our, our northern lady, as I like to call her. So uh, we did start working on the blue and got some nice highlights on the uh, the blue gray. So now I got to deal with the black and uh, I think with the leather a bit. Uh, definitely need to maybe put some real faint wood grain on here. Uh, and yeah, probably probably going to deal with some leather and uh, and maybe start the heraldry. Maybe start the the heraldry. Yeah, she's nice. I like her. Yep, the hair is a little a little like braidy, but like other than that, this is a good this is a good mini. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
Yup. All right. That being said, show up tomorrow to see this model. She's getting really close to done. We got to talk about snow basing. I, I'm on a run of snow base for sure. Um, but yeah, thank you very much, Luca. Have a great stream. And I will see you again in the future. Where's my button? My button to escape. <laughs> Super Richard. All right. You guys have a great day, okay? And I can't wait for my box. My GW box. Yee! <laughs> Talk to you later. Bye-bye.